Hashem taking something away from me. And I have two options here how to deal with it. I can either deal with it in an immature way, and I'm not saying it chas v'shalom to hurt anybody, but to look at what was taken from me. Or I can look at it in a very mature way and say, oh, okay, first of all, the fact that my loved one just passed away, it has nothing to do with me. They had to leave this world. They finished their cycle. Doesn't matter who they are. I mean, a person comes to this world for 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, they finish their job, they're, they're moving on. They're in a much better place. They're going to, 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 to Gan Eden, they'll sit wherever they sit. It's me that has to deal with, with the void in my life. So it all depends how I'm looking at it. If I'm looking at it, that first of all, there's nothing against me. Nobody did like my, my sister. She was upset at her husband. Why did he leave me? I said, what kind of an argument you're putting here? You're upset at him that he left? He didn't choose to leave you. He did not choose to leave you. That was the Ashgaha Pratit. His soul came down to the world for 40 years. It had t that was the time for him to leave. It has nothing to do with you. Don't take it personal. Don't be upset at him. Why are you upset at the, at the poor Neshama? I've seen, I've seen cases like that. Um, it's not it's Oh, I'm not analyzing why. I'm just giving an example that she was upset at him and I was trying to make her understand it has nothing to do with him, it has to do with you. Come on, she didn't think that he I'm not analyzing what... Of course, but I'm not now trying to analyze why she said that. I was trying to tell her when I need to deal with the lost, I need to right away pull down a screen and say, first of all, the person who left, the animal who left, the money that disappeared, whatever it is, has nothing to do with me. It had to go. Yeah. Now when, I'm, when I have a void in my life, A, I do have to mourn. I cannot mourn money. That's already, if I lost my house or I lost my money, I cannot mourn that. That just has to come to me as a wake-up call. But if it's a loved one, I have to go through the motion of mourning because there is some type of spiritual connection and I have to let go. But one of the ways of mourning is understanding that the person who left is in a very good place. It accomplished what it needed to accomplish. It had to leave. But it's too hard for me to leave without that person. Of course, I didn't so it's not... My day-to-day -day life could be horrible since... Uh, and the way to let go... The only way to, uh, to overcome this loneliness and the void is by letting go of the person who had to leave. If I'm holding on to that person, some people, unfortunately, when somebody dies, all the house is pictures and they hold the clothes and don't give out the clothes and everything constantly. It's not healthy. The right way is to sit, to be sad, to mourn. That's why our sages, the sages are not a bunch of rabbis who sat in a shul and said, okay, let's see how we can annoy them. These are people with Ruach HaKodesh and they knew exactly what is the, the method, the, the ingredients to let go. So if our sages tell us based on the Torah that we have to sit Shiva, it means that for one week, I, whatever it's told to me, not to shower, not to take haircuts, not to do this, not to change clothes, there's a reason for that. Because spiritually, I'm starting to untie these knots. And then the, the entire year, I'm not allowed to hear music. It's not to annoy me. It's because in this year, there's a process that I have to untie my knots. Now, if I do it the right way, and I don't clan onto that person, or to the loved one, then I, I'm able to let it go. Now, imagine, you have to understand,